Hello learners, this is Easy Engineering. Today, we're going to talk about another interesting topic in physics, and that is about collision. Recall in the previous video, we found out that momentum is conserved. That is because the momentum of each object can change, but the total momentum does not. Now, why is that? To explain further, let's talk about momentum and kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. The formula for kinetic energy is equal to 1 half in V squared, where Ke is the kinetic energy in joules or kilogram meters squared per second squared, M is mass in kilogram, and V is velocity in meters per second. Take a look at this example. A 1 kilogram ball travels at 20 meters per second, its momentum is 20 kilogram meter per second, and its kinetic energy is 200 joules. On the other hand, a 10 kg ball travels at 2 meters per second, its momentum is 20 kg meter per second, and its kinetic energy is 20 joules. The momentum for the two balls is the same, but their kinetic energies are very different from each other. The smaller ball has a much higher kinetic energy. Now, what about a collision? A collision is when two objects strike each other over a short space of time. A collision can either be elastic or inelastic. Inelastic collisions are mushy like, like dough balls, while elastic collisions are bouncy like rubber balls. In a perfectly inelastic collision, the objects stick together and end up sharing a new velocity. The objects get deformed by the collision, so kinetic energy is lost as it gets converted into heat, light, and sound. In a perfectly elastic collision, on the other hand, the objects bounce perfectly, for perfectly of each other. The total kinetic energy stays exactly the same. For example, drop a tennis ball. Look at it closely. You see, it won't bounce back to the same height mainly because some kinetic energy is lost on the bounce and a little is lost due to air resistance. So the bounce is slightly inelastic but mostly elastic. Now speaking of collisions, did you know that no stars will collide when the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies collide in roughly 4 billion years? That is because the odds of any two stars actually colliding are extremely small, considering the large distances separating them. Think of it this way, if our solar system was a coin, the nearest system to us would be another coin placed more than 200 yards away when the, when the two galaxies collide. Amazing, right? Now let's go back. Let's talk about scenarios that could actually collide. Vehicle collision videos from the internet are always viral. Have you ever asked which type of collision is more damaging? Well, let us find out together. So here, which is more damaging, a mostly elastic or mostly inelastic vehicle collision? This actually depends on what you are concerned about damaging, the vehicle or the occupant. Suppose a vehicle collides elastically with another object. The vehicle will necessarily rebound. The change in momentum as the vehicle rebounds is greater than in an equivalent inelastic collision. The force on an occupant is therefore greater and that is clearly worse for the occupant. On the other hand, because it is an elastic collision, no energy will be dissipated in deforming the vehicle. Damage to the structure of the vehicle would therefore be minimized. Modern vehicles are designed to make us or to make use of both inelastic and inelastic collisions in the event of an accident. The frame of a vehicle is designed to absorb energy in a collision through the formation of composed zones built in the structure of the vehicle. The interior passenger compartment, however, is designed to be strong so that damage to the occupant is minimized. Alright, that ends our lesson for today. I hope you learned something. See you again next time for our more interesting and fun topics only here in Easy Engineering. We make engineering topics easy and fun for you.